Hi folks, it's Will at LR Workshop. If you're interested in buying a Marsden chassis and you want to know what they look like and what the quality is like, then I'm going to walk you around this chassis and you can see what the details are like. So this is my uh, Marsden chassis. It's a 110 chassis for a 300 TDI that I bought in 2016. Now, the reason I bought this is I thought uh, my... So I know that I want to do a rebuild at some point in the future and I knew that I wanted a Marsden chassis. And my feeling was that with the end of the Defender production, these were not going to be available anymore because these are actually genuine Land Rover chassis made by GKM that Mars and do some modifications do to and and then they galvanized. So I was suspecting that that uh, supply of these was going to dry up. That hasn't happened. They're still available, but they are about probably thirty percent more expensive than three years ago so i'm filming this in 2019 this chassis has been here for the last three years undercover and it's rem in remarkable condition as you would hope from a galvanized chassis it's probably m worth mentioning why i actually went for marsland over richards or some of the others that are available um i'm a purist so i actually wanted a uh a, a real chassis that when i looked underneath was going to look like a genuine land Rover chassis um the the key difference is that these are made from two c sections and then welded together so c section here c section here welded down the middle you'll see other ones that are built up from plates like the richards chassis they're welded they're made from four plates so they're welded along the edges here and here that's one of the main differences you'll see i think they also make them from two and a half mil steel and i think these are 1.8 or 2 mil steel so you know land rover people love the hd people love with their land rovers buying hd components but when it comes to the chassis these chassis are pretty good and all you're doing is adding if you're going from a 2 mil to 2.5 mil thickness of metal you know you're basically adding 25 percent extra weight on your chassis and when i, I think that's unnecessary so that having a 2.5 mil thick chassis is actually a turn off for me. I don't want to increase the weight of this. You know, 25% on 200 kilos is about an extra 50 kilos of weight that is just unnecessary. So um, th those were the two main reasons why actually I went for Marsland for the, uh, the fact that it's a genuine OEM chassis and uh, it's not heavy in HD, um, as it were. I'm going to walk you around this and uh, point out a few things that um, I've noticed on the chassis. I tell you, getting this, getting this here in this position was incredibly difficult. You cannot lift this with anything less than four men. It's, uh, and I would prefer more than four men, actually. I, it was incredibly, um, incredibly difficult. What we did was we threaded wood through here and carried it on kind of on its side like this and um it's probably two people here and then two people here and you've got to get the balance perfect because otherwise i i've never felt my spine crushed as much as trying to lift this thing up when it was not balanced correctly um yeah i cannot understate how heavy this thing is i don't know the exact weight um but we're probably looking 200 kilos at least so let me walk you around and point out some of the features. So these are basically Puma chassis that are modified to fit earlier vehicles. So a few things you can tell that it's a Puma chassis. You've got things like the later brake clips here for the, the ABS sensors, as well as the brake lines on the, the spring seats here. What else have we got? We've got front anti-roll bars. Um, we've got the extra webbing here uh, on the front outrigger. Oh, interesting fact, if this if you ever wondered what this hole's for, or these holes along here, these are for the um, the cradle that lowers the bulkhead into position. They clamp into these holes to make sure that the bulkhead is correctly positioned in the factory. So that's what they're for. And then these ones are naturally just drain holes. It's a bit difficult to see in the sun here. And then moving along. What else have we got? These are the same as earlier vehicles. The spider is not mandatory. That's an optional extra. Um, the Puma vehicles also have different um, crow's feet. They don't have, the, or rather, they don't have the crow's feet. These are welded in rather than bolted in. Um, 
on here. This changed, in, I think it's around about 2008 or 2009, they moved to this. And then of course we've got the, the rear cross member that's more TD5 style. With the big hole there for the towing electrics. So the things that Marsden do to make this into a 300 TDI chassis are essentially a few things. Engine mounts. So I'll just, I'll just say they get these from GKN without the specific mounts on place and they will go and weld them in. So they're not cutting up Puma chassis to put on the actual mounts. They get these from GKN without the specific mounts and they put them on later and then galvanize them. So these are 300 TDI engine mounts on here. And then the gearbox cross member, that's specific to the 300 TDI. So that's a unique there. And then here we've got transfer box and gearbox mounting points on this side and up here. Possibly the exhaust mount hangers. Um, I think that one's not. I think this one gets welded on as a 300 TDI um, option. Um, the crow's feet stay the same. The the bushings are different, so they give you this. The, this is not the bolt. It's a sleeve on there, um, so you have to put that sleeve in your previous um, A-frame arms, or you can upgrade them to the to the later larger bush. Uh, coming back here, they this is the 300 TDI um, metal fuel tank cradle. So they weld on, uh, not cradle, sorry, the body support. So they weld this on with the legs here, but they keep these are for the TD5, uh, the plastic fuel tank. So they, uh, these are remain on there. So you can still use the plastic tank probably. Um, this section is welded on for the front mount of the metal, the metal fuel tank, and then this bar here is uh welded on for the metal fuel tank at the back there so um those are basically the modifications that marsden do to make this a 300 tdi chassis so what i'm going to do now is uh in slow time this may be interesting for you or not i'm going to walk around the chassis and just point out or just look at the quality of all the different sections so you can either see what the quality is like or you can compare it to your chassis um if you're not sure what what you think another chassis um, looks like, or whether whether you've got a dud, shall we say? Because it, it does happen, and these are big purchases. You want to get it right. So the back face, if we can get a bit of view, and some light. The back face is quite smooth, a little bit rough in patches on here. Um. There's all the typical kind of splatter marks, but that's from the chassis. And yeah, it's a bit dirty, but all this, let's look in the sunlight there. It's all very smooth, actually, very good quality galvanizing on there. And the welding is, uh, that Mars and Nevada is actually, it's not bad. Same, the, the face on this galvanizing is pretty smooth. A few marks and bubbles, um, rough patches. Um, as I say, this has been here about three years, so I don't know if there's been some kinds of reaction to the galve. It's uh, in the spring seat. Reactions like this, for example, we've got a bit of powdery. It's a bit powdery. Um, there might be some water running and pooling on here. But as they say, galvanizes, galv galvanizing is a sacrificial coating, so it will corrode. It just protects the steel. Look in there. Bottom chassis rails are very clean, actually. They're very nice. And on the inside, edge yeah, similar. So there's areas like this. Let's try and get focus on that that are kind of, they look like, I would call them eruptions, but I don't know if they look like that three years ago, if I'm honest. Um, but they don't, it doesn't particularly bother me. It's not crumbling away. This is a bit odd. I don't know if that's a factory extra plate welded on there or what. Um, these are the mounts for the the uh, the brackets for the rear seats on the Puma. This is where they they screw into. You put um, captive nuts in there. 
and on here. So all the holes are pretty good actually. These are a little, you can keep it, you can drill those out. That one's probably the only one I've seen, or first one I've seen that is a bit filled in. But all these hexagonal holes that um, take rivnuts, I think these would probably be for the side steps perhaps. Um, they're all in similar good condition. There's a bit of a bump there. You see that? Bit of a bump there. I don't know if that would potentially be a warp area or whether that's part of the chassis, but it's a slight raised area around there. But uh, as I say, that didn't particularly worry me. Galvanizing's got a really good coating everywhere. Turn around here. Look up under. This is the radius arm mount. Have a look at the outriggers up here. Can you still see the spot welds? Maybe along this face here, a few more kind of erupted areas. Um, yeah, generally, I don't know, this is just sort of some imperfections, shall we say. So uh, that's the general thing is you'll get the chassis and it'll, it'll have imperfections in the galvanizing, but that's just, it's a very crude treatment, put it that way. It's designed, it's a very agricultural um, protective coat, you know, so I wouldn't expect the finish to be, you know, it's not, uh, it's not for a show car, put it that way. Was cross member, and when they put all these bolts on, um, they spray them with uh, anti seize grease as well. Gearbox cross member, very smooth. I guess the biggest imperfection, the biggest imperfection I've seen is this area here. Let's get that in the sunlight. It's basically a runoff bit of galve that's uh, accumulated along here. It. Um, it, uh, it's not going to affect anything. You can still get the bolts on and off and nothing bolts into here. So that's, that just is what it is. Um, also as well, uh, there was areas here on these rough edges, um, on these thin edges. Uh, it's potential for where Gal was flaked off. I did see this on the day it was delivered and it just had little sections flaked off, but, um, I guess I was okay with this. It's not a big deal. I guess fundamentally, I don't really know what to ex didn't really know what to expect with galvanizing. There you go in the outrigger, and uh, there's rib nuts in here. So this is for the mud flaps. And in here, spring seats are nice. There's a little bit of extra galve in there, but. Easy to drill out. All these holes are nice. This is where the steering box bolts on. Uh, yeah, along the top here. Yeah, it's nice. And you got to remember, this is um, this is dulled down a bit. This has been here three years, so. And then, oh, the galve—it just gets everywhere. It's brilliant. All coated on the inside. Bit of cobwebs in there. Yeah. So there we go. So that was my Mars and chassis. I hope you found this interesting. If you want to compare to your chassis or if you're thinking about buying one, um i would say they're pretty good pretty good quality uh, i'm happy with the quality and i think it's important to understand you that it's not a perfect coating it's not like a excellent powder coating pristine smooth surface there's some imperfections you'll get but really you're investing in a galvanized chassis for the longevity of your vehicle um not really for cosmetic purposes the only cosmetic section is the rear cross member and i think you can you can smooth it up and get it looking nice if that's what you want to do 
no no problems whatsoever if you found this video interesting then subscribe because i've probably got loads more videos that you'll find interesting on my channel and uh, give us a thumbs up if this is the sort of content that you like watching bye for now